So at the start, I will give you a background about the, uh, the Eastern Mediterranean region that is severely hit by uh, emergencies which left 76 million people in the region directly or indirectly affected by political conflicts, environmental threats, and natural disaster. The EMR is the largest uh, region that hosting uh, an increased uh, caseload of displaced population, including 70 million in IDP and 60 million refugees, with limited access to basic healthcare services and environmental uh, health infrastructure. That's why cholera remains a major public health risk in the Eastern Mediterranean region. At least 13 out of 22 countries in the region have reported cholera cases in the last decade. Eight of them is the most challenging countries in the world with humanitarian complex emergencies. Cholera is endemic in 40% of the EMR countries uh, with frequent upsurge of cases and leading to frequent outbreaks. During 2022, eight out of the 22 countries reported AWD cholera cases and outbreaks. And from the uh, graph, you can see the number of cases reported during 2022 uh, that reached 1 million cases with 300 uh, deaths were reported this year. Regarding color surveillance in the EMR, it is estimated that more than 180,000 cases occurred annually. However, accurate quantification is limited due to weak surveillance, weak surveillance system. All of the 22 countries are considering uh, cholera as immediate reportable disease uh, as a part of the routine surveillance system. There were eight countries reported AWD uh, slash cholera during 2022. And most of the reporting countries are facing emergencies and reporting through e warned system. Other countries in the region also reported very few number of cases. In, for example, Kuwait, which reported uh, imported cases. Uh, we can see from the, the table that about 1 million cases were reported last year. Uh, the highest frequent uh, country uh, with Afghanistan, um, Syria, and Pakistan. Regarding the surveillance type, uh, we can categorize can, uh, Eastern Mediterranean regional countries into stable countries and emergency countries. So in stable countries, they report in case-based reporting as cholera is considered as an out outbreak. Other countries, uh, the emergency country, including Afghanistan, Djibouti, Iraq, Syria, Somalia, Sudan, Libya, and Yemen, are using e warn system, and Pakistan um, uh, used it in 2022 uh, following the floods that hit 17 districts in uh, 2022. Data is collected at subnational level and is based on uh, sentinel sites and aggregated by age and sex. Some countries uh, additionally use separate platforms for collection of cholera data using cholera outbreak portal like Syria and Somalia. The confirmation is done uh, uh, through st uh, stool sampling. Uh, for every 10th patient who met the case definition, RDTs are used, and 10% of positive RDTs are cultured. Uh, this year, the updated uh, uh, GTFCC uh, guideline was in, uh, adopted in some countries like Syria. However, this might be challenging due to the availability of RTTs and um, lab confirmation supplies. So sample management, including sample collection, transportation, testing is affected by accessibility, security condition, as well as availability of resources, supplies, and reagents. How the data is reported to the regional office it is reported through various means of uh, data sharing. For example, case-based data or line lists are shared to the regional office on ad hoc basis during outbreaks. Aggregated data and situation reports are more frequently shared. Um, as an example, Somalia share regularly uh, the weekly cholera situation report, e warn weekly bulletin, and uh, weekly aggregated color data and monthly aggregated color data, but this stopped during 2022 uh, when they shifted from e to ITSR. 
uh, Yemen also used to share, but uh, the sharing is in regular. Pakistan, Afghanistan, Syria, they share a weekly bulletin. Uh, Sudan, with the 2019 outbreak, they shared with us the line list, weekly aggregated data, daily and weekly situation report, and also the official uh, Minister of Health presentation. These are examples of the data that is shared with the regional office, including cell sheet, uh, weekly epidemiological bulletins, and presentations that is uh, compiled and analyzed at the regional level. The feedback mechanism at the regional cholera, for the regional cholera data is given through a production of weekly CITRIP and monthly bulletin for Somalia and Yemen. The regional cholera platform is still in the development process and mostly is uh, serve as a hub for uh, available guidelines, reports, and uh, for donor alerts. And I will uh, explain uh, more about it in a, a few seconds. Regional Office uh, cholera surveillance data has mainly been used for planning purposes and monitoring cholera status in the region, monitoring cholera preparedness and prevention programs and activities, also in procurement of supplies and supporting countries in the national cholera policies and planning. And this example of the uh, cholera situation report that is produced for Yemen, this is for Somalia, Regarding the regional partnership, EMRO is collaborating with relevant stakeholders and partners and providing leadership for color prevention, detection, and response. The regional office serves as a central body of a technical and emergency support for the cholera in the region. However, the role of regional partnership in collecting uh, and using regional color data is still not well defined. This is an example of data sharing using the MENA Regional Cholera Platform, which is a, a reproduction of what is in the Afro region. The cholera platform for uh, MENA was created in 2018, and it entered now, it is operational phase. The platform is a part of the activities of the global roadmap implementation. Its objective to have some coordination between different partners, uh, operating at the regional level for support in terms of expertise, advocacy, and resource mobilization. In addition, uh, the regional office is the regularly assess the risk of cholera spread. And the last uh, cholera assessment was done in 2022, uh, which revealed a very high risk of spread, including the spread uh, to refugees, IDPs, illegal migrants in Turkey, for example, and refugee in Jordan. Uh, due to continued conflicts, uh, economic crisis, and population displacement in the region, and challenging uh, in coordination with multiple hubs and authorities, uh, also due to low visibility and information sharing by local governments and surveillance challenges, and effect of uh, climate changes and extreme weather, including floods and droughts in the region. Uh, Jordan, in December 22, went through a consultative meeting to assess the risk of spreading of cholera, and it was assessed, uh, the likelihood was assessed of getting the cholera cases is high, but the impact was calculated as minor due to uh, good preparedness and, and uh, mitigation activities, and it is planned to do the same for uh, Egypt in response to refugee influx, Sudanese refugee influx um, following the conflict in Sudan. The challenges in information sharing, okay, the challenges in, ac in accessing country uh, color data and uh, generating uh, a regional data approach uh, due to cholera data is not regularly shared. Some countries are reluctant in uh, officially declare uh, cholera outbreaks. That's why in some countries we still refer to AWD. And lack of interest of countries for establishment strengthening of a cholera surveillance system. The, change, the main challenge that faced cholera response in general, as my colleagues from Sierra and Afro mentioned, is the weak surveillance system under reporting to reduce the political pressure, lack of lab capacity in some countries, lack of coordination between relevant stakeholders, limited preparedness for seasonal cholera outbreak, 
and that we are always reactive responding to uh, cholera after outbreak is detected, limited resources for public health control activities, lack of cross-border collaboration between neighboring countries, in addition to absence of active lab-based surveillance, and emergency stockpiling for drug and other supplies are not available, unsafe water at point of use, and uh, social mobilization campaign and risk of uh, communication to public and critical knowledge gap that necessitate an urgent in uh, investment in wash, wash and wash to prevent outbreak and other pillars like surveillance, case management and community engagement. The way forward, as my colleagues described earlier, is to enhance the leadership uh, and coordination, multi-sectorial coordination at the national and subnational level, to invest in water and sanitation infrastructure to improve access to clean water and proper sanitation, to strengthen surveillance and uh, core response capacities, including lab surveillance, clinical management, IPC, uh, enhance uh, cholera prevention knowledge among the public and frontline healthcare workers, and timely introduction of OCV vaccination. Uh, at the end, I would like to um, thank my colleague, uh, Mohamed Tayyab. I think you saw his name frequently on the uh, slides. He's the, the cholera focal point. He couldn't be with us for uh, uh, emergency reasons, but I thank you. Thank him for preparing this slide. Thank you.